Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the Pinterest Image Gallery block, which is part of our key blocks for Gutenberg plugin. As you might have guessed from its name, this block will help you create galleries that look like Pinterest boards. At the moment, we're looking at the blocks page, which has a few examples of Pinterest image galleries. The galleries you create with this block can be boxed or full width. They can have gaps between images, or set the images to be right next to one another. There are all kinds of helpful options that will let you create a Pinterest-style gallery to match your dream design. With all that said, let's head over to the back end so we can take a closer look at how this block works. I created a new page to work in, and now I need to add a Pinterest image gallery block to it. Blocks can be added in a couple of ways. One is by clicking on this blue plus button. It opens the block selection. Here you'll see all the blocks your site has. You'll be able to easily tell the key blocks apart by their red icons. But other than the key blocks collection, the selection you see here comprises everything that's installed on your site. That includes Gutenberg blocks as well as anything else you may have added. Now you can browse through this selection to find the block you want. And when you do, simply drag and drop it to add it to the page. I'll close this because I want to show you another way to add blocks. It involves clicking on this plus icon within the page. This opens a pop-up with a view of my recent blocks and the search bar above that. I'm going to start typing the block name to look for it. And there it is. I didn't even have to finish typing. Then I simply need to click on the block to add it to the page. Here we go. And this is what the Pinterest image gallery block looks like by default. It has three images shown across three columns. To customize it, we'll start with the options in the Content tab. And the first thing we have here is the Gallery field. I'll click here to delete the placeholder images. And then go to the Media Library to pick out new ones. I'll be adding these six. You can select multiple images at the same time, just hold down the Shift key. OK, create a new gallery. And once we've created that gallery, we can rearrange the order of the images within it. That's done by simple drag and drop. Give me a moment while I set my images in the order I want them to follow. There. And while we're here, we can also add captions for our gallery images. I don't plan to do that, but I'll set something here, just as an example that will help me show some options later on. Alright. And this is what my gallery looks like at the moment. The images are still in three columns and have spaces between them. The next thing we can do for the gallery is enable custom links. If we switch this on, we'll get a new field where we can enter the URLs for the images. And as you can see from this note under the field, the URLs should be separated by commas. Also, the order in which the links will be applied to the images follows the order that you set them in. So the first URL will apply to the first image, the second one to the second, and so on. But as I don't plan on setting specific links for this, I'll switch this option off to disable custom links. After that, we have the Enable Lightbox pop-up option. It's set to be enabled by default. In order to show you what it does, I need to open a live page preview. And before I do that, I'm going to hit Update so the images I added would be visible in the preview. And I'm going to open it in a new tab. OK, here we are. Now when I click on an image, it opens with an overlay in the same window. And in this view, there are navigation arrows on the side that visitors can use to go through the entire gallery. So that's the lightbox pop-up. Let's get back to the options. As this is a useful thing for a gallery to have, I'll keep it enabled. Our next option is the number of columns. It's set to 3 by default. You can easily increase or decrease this number, depending on what design you have in mind. I'm going to stick with 3. Following that, we have the Space Between Items option. If I move the slider, you can see how the amount of space increases. For the value here, I'll put 27 pixels, slightly less than the default space between items. All right. Next, we have the Columns Responsive option. This is where we set how our gallery will display on different screen widths. The default setting is predefined. It's a great option if you don't want to meddle with the settings yourself. 
but if you do want to make manual adjustments, you can switch to custom, and then you can select the number of columns that will be shown on different screen widths. The available settings here cover everything from laptops and MacBooks to tablets and mobile phones with varying orientations. However, I plan to stick with the predefined setting. It works perfectly well, and there is nothing specific I want to change about the number of columns shown on different screen widths. Moving on, the next thing we have is the image hover option. The default setting is none, although there are different possibilities you can pick here. At the moment, when I hover over an image, nothing changes. If we select the zoom setting, then the image will zoom in a bit. And, since I enabled one of the two available zoom effects, I get to pick the image hover zoom origin. Here we can pick which part of the image will be the zoom origin point. It's set to center by default, and it looks like this. You can also set it to be at the top, so it looks like this. At the bottom, which looks like this. Then left, so we get this. Or right, so we get this. I'll return this to the center, as that's the setting I want to use. Also, I plan to keep the zoom image hover effect, but I want to show you the others from this drop-down menu. There's zoom out, the second zoom effect, and it looks like this. Then move, which looks like this. We also have the caption info box setting, and this is the reason I added that one example caption. Because now, if I hover over any of the images, nothing changes until I reach the one with the caption. Then we have a pop-up box at the bottom showing the caption I set. There are other settings that I can use the caption on too. One is caption in middle, and it creates this overlay across the entire image. Besides that, there's also the caption follow info setting. With that one, the caption is in a floating box that follows our cursor. And those are all the settings we have for image hover effects. I'll go back to using zoom, as that's the one I originally wanted. And the origin point is in the center, resulting in this look. Now, under all this, we have the advanced section. It contains only one option, the additional CSS classes. This is where you can create a specific class for this element, and then you can use that class and refer to it when making CSS that would style the Pinterest image gallery block. Okay, that's the last thing in the Content Options tab. Going back to the top, we'll open the Style tab next. The first option here is the Image Border Radius. With it, we can curve the sharp corners of our gallery images. I set this value as an example, and you can clearly see how blunt the corners are now. If this is too round for your taste, you can reduce the value and get less curve for the image edges. Try it out to see what setting you like best. For my part, I'll simply reset this as I don't want any radius for this gallery design. After that, we have the overlay color. It comes with this user-friendly color picker, so you can select whatever overlay color you like and then use this slider to give your overlay a degree of transparency, which will reveal the images under the color. Okay, let me reset this. And here we have the overlay hover color. The same principle applies, only now the color will be visible on hover. So, if I set something and hover over an image, the new color shows only on hover. And again, you can set the degree of transparency to keep the image visible on hover. And then it might look something like this. Okay, I'll reset this too. That brings us to the end of the style options. The advanced section underneath is the same one we saw in the content tab a moment ago. All this leaves us with the advanced tab. The options here are something you get with every one of the key blocks for Gutenberg, and they serve to set how an individual block will look and act on the page. For example, there are responsiveness and motion effect settings here. While these options are undoubtedly useful as they can help you adjust the block positioning, background, border, and more, they affect blocks as a whole. They aren't specific to the Pinterest image gallery block, so we won't be covering them in this tutorial. Given that I'm done creating my gallery, I'll hit update to see if all the changes I've made. Before we part, I want to quickly show you how to switch the Pinterest image gallery from box to full width. For that, let's go to the page settings. And here under template, we can see the page I've been working in is using the default template. 
Since my WordPress theme has a default grid of 1300 pixels enabled, that grid has been applied to my page and all its content via the default template. And to stretch my gallery to full width, I need to have a template that allows that. So I can select key full width as a template. Okay, the gallery shifted, but that's not it. I need to update for the change to properly take. Then refresh. And here we go. Now I have a gallery that stretches to the edges of my page. So if you want a full width gallery, you need to add it to a page that uses a full width template. I'm using the key template as that's the one I have, but any full width template you get with your theme will do the job. Okay, I'll restore the default template now. And update. Then refresh. And here we are. This is my finished Pinterest image gallery. Thanks to the key block I used, it automatically has this Pinterest style look without me having to make any fiddly or complicated settings. As you've seen, it takes only moments to set up the gallery, as the key block is doing most of the heavy lifting. Now, if you'd like to see other examples of how a Pinterest image gallery might look, you can refer back to the page we started from. It has a couple of different examples that can serve as either a blueprint that you can copy or as a source of inspiration. Either way, now that you know what options you get with this blog, you'll find it easy to break down any of these examples to make something entirely unique. Ultimately, we hope you've found this tutorial on the Pinterest image gallery blog useful and that you will be trying it out shortly. If you have any questions after watching this video, or comments or suggestions you'd like to make, please drop us a line in the comment section below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about any new tutorials and theme guides. Thank you for watching.